You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Welcome to the Dressage Today podcast's Training Buzz. These short podcasts bring you the best tips straight from our subscription video site, Equestrian Plus. To get full access to over 5,000 videos, go to equestrianplus.com and enter DT Podcast to get 15% off your first month's subscription. Now listen in on this week's buzz and enjoy the ride. In today's buzz, bit and bridle expert and USDF gold medalist, Stephanie Brown Beamer, gives an overview of bidding practices for your dressage horse. She shares what she has learned, what she often sees, trends she has observed, and what you should keep in mind when bidding your own horse. She discusses her process for assessing a horse and his mouth to select the most appropriate bit. Hi, I'm Stephanie Brown Beamer. Today I'll be discussing bit and bridle fitting. I'm a USDF bronze, silver, and gold medalist. I'm a trainer, uh, L graduate, and a Lantra certified bit and bridle fitter. I've been doing bit and bridle fitting since 2016, done thousands of horses, and today I want to share with you a little bit about what I've learned and what I see, trends, and what you should be looking for in your horse. When we think about the horse and our bit and bridle fitting, one thing that we do need to consider is the whole horse, from our farrier care to our working closely with our vet for lameness, soundness, with our saddle fit, um, body work, you know, chiropractic, so that we're addressing the whole horse and not just eat an individual part. They all work together to have a healthy horse to create the best partner we can possibly have. Another important piece when we are addressing the whole horse is nutrition. If our horse doesn't have a well-balanced diet, then they're not going to put on the muscle so they can't build a muscular structure to support their skeletal structure. They're not that much different than us. As we age, we need to make sure that we stay healthy muscularly to support our, our skeletal structure as well. When I assess a horse, when I first walk up to it, one of the things that I look at first is their temperament. I want to make sure that they're comfortable with me. And then the next thing, <laughs> this is my own horse. <laughs> the next thing that I'm looking at is I just lightly put my finger in the corner of the mouth. And what I'm feeling for is how loose, relaxed the lips are, or if they're tight. And what that starts to do is give me a little bit of information as to possibly how comfortable or uncomfortable the horse has been with the bit over time. Um, oftentimes you'll feel a band in the corner of their mouth. And what I've found is that that tends to be found in horses that have been comfortable over time, that have been pursing their lips. Um, the next thing that I look at is the length of the smile from the front of the muzzle to the corner of the mouth in proportion to the head. And his on a scale from zero to 10 would probably be a six and a half to a seven. 10 being the shortest mouth, zero being the longest mouth. What we find nowadays is a lot of our more modern warm bloods will have short smiles. Why it's important to know is if we think about the horse's tongue as the top of my hand, Back by my wrist is the back of the tongue. This is the front of the tongue. The back of the tongue is the thickest, fleshiest part of the tongue. It's the least sensitive part of the tongue. As you go down the middle, where it's still pretty thick and fleshy, it's also not very sensitive. But as you go all the way around the edges, it gets quite sensitive. So when they have a short smile, the bits are going to sit more forward on a more sensitive part of the tongue, which starts to tell us that we're going to have to be a little creative in our bits. There's a number of bits on the market that sit further back on the tongue where they're sitting on a less sensitive part. So then once I evaluate the length of the smile, what I'm going to do is open the lips and I want to look at how fleshy the lips are. And what I'm looking for is, well, I give everything a score from zero to 10 because I'm a dressage rider, everything gets a score. <laughs> um, and what I'm looking for is how fleshy this part of his lips are <laughs> right in here. And the reason this is important to notice is because 
these, that tissue in there is quite sensitive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift his head a bit and look at his bottom first cheek tooth. And what I'm looking for is to see how, how tall or short it is. The reason it's important to do that is that when they have a very short first cheek tooth, what can happen as you put the bits on the tongue, and you pick up on the reins, it can push all that tissue back. We really need to make sure that the dentist files the edges of that tooth round and soft so that that tissue can slide over that tooth if it needs to. Um, then the next thing I'm going to look at is the thickness of his tongue. And this horse, he's half Frisian, has quite a thick tongue. And then I give it a score from zero to 10. He'd be about a seven. And then the next thing I'm going to look at on his tongue, I want him to kind of lower his tongue a little. And the tongue is a muscle. And oftentimes, we'll see a lump. Thank you. We'll see a lump on the tongue. And what that is, most horses will have a slight lump. But some will be quite extreme. Stallions, you can see a a striation in the muscle straight across the tongue. And what that is, is the horse retracts their tongue a bit, puts the tongue against the back of the bit and to stabilize it. And in some cases, when the horse really pulls the tongue back, they'll put a lot of the tongue behind the bit to stabilize it, to give themselves some relief from the discomfort. In stallions, because they build muscle so much more, <laughs> and their jaws, their jowls, their neck are so strong is they'll pull that tongue back, put it behind the bit. And the first time I saw it was years ago in Utah when I was riding a quarter horse and he had been a stallion for a long time and I thought he had cut his tongue. And after years of seeing horses with these lumps and the stallions that actually have this line straight across their tongue, I realized that it's from them bracing the back of the tongue against the bit. I saw a draft horse a few months ago that had been uh, a driving horse with the Amish, and his tongue actually folded over on top of itself because I'm sure he was in a driving bit pulling a lot of weight. Um, so that's another thing to notice, and that will start to tell you how comfortable or uncomfortable your horse has been over time. Then I'm going to look at his palate. if he opens his mouth. And this particular horse has a, a bit of a low palate, but the one thing that we do know is that when horses start to age, their incisors start to grow forward. Their bottom molars, uh, first cheek tooth, tend to get a little short. And what happens is the palate then drops. So horses that went in a particular bit when they were five, when they're 15, don't, may not tend to go as well in that particular bit. Um, and Griff is 18 this year, unfortunately. I wish he was eight. Um, and his palate has definitely dropped a bit. Then I'm going to look at the corners of his mouth, the commatures of his mouth right in here. And he has a little bit of, of pigmentation, which tells me that he's had maybe some abrasions in the corner of his mouth, some cuts, and that can be due to the bit. Um, you know, you do have to take into consideration the climate that you're riding in. I always suggest people use some type of a bit butter or Vaseline or desitin or something like that to keep the corners of the mouth nice and supple and not too dry. Another piece that I always feel for is the bars. The bars of the horse are the inner dental area where there's no teeth on the bottom. It's actually the jawbone. You can run your fingers. There's no teeth there from the front canine all the way back to the first cheek tooth. And what you're feeling for is just that they're smooth. I've known horses to have bone spurs. It can be from bit trauma. It can be from the horse leaning on one side can be from a bit that's too big, but they've also found it in foals that have had no bit, wild horses that have had no bits in their mouth. So we're not, not really too sure what they're from. I've seen abscess on the bars. 
Um, the bars only have skin about three millimeters thick. They're, the bars are only about that wide. We all tend to think they're about this wide, but they're not, they're quite narrow. So when you're thinking of your bits, you wanna make sure that the lozenge in the middle and the rings for the lozenge in the middle of a double jointed bit are not wider than the bars because then you'll have, you can have some bit trauma and pressure on the bars. Um, horses like Arabs and thoroughbreds tend to have very sharp angular bars with even thinner skin on them. So they tend to have a little bit more sensitive mouth. I do see it a lot in more modern warm bloods. They seem to have quite sharp bars. Um, so those are things to take into consideration. Maybe finding a bit that has a little more even pressure across the whole tongue. We hope you enjoyed this bonus podcast. Remember, go to equestrianplus.com to subscribe to our online catalog and enter DT Podcast to get 15% off your first month. Thanks for listening.